How's it going, guys? It is 12, 10 a.m., February 8th, here in Japan. Pass a little question for renal pathology for step one, as well as family medicine, internal medicine, surgery, 2CK. Nearly identical NBME question shows up on 2CK material. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group or channel are down below. Now start the clip. 32-year-old woman, flank pain fever, she has type 1 diabetes, temperature 102 Fahrenheit, looks like count of 23,000 per microliter, normal range 4 to 11,000, 80% neutrophils, should be 50 to 60% neutrophils, the fact that we have a neutrophilic shift means bacterial infection, urine culture positive for E. coli, IV antibiotics administered, 10 days later she remains febrile, which the following is most likely the cause. Let's just whip through the answer choices here, pass level, as I said, not dramatic, choice A, development of antibiotics, resistance, wrong fucking answer. The way we normally treat pilo, ciprofloxacin, classically, uh, DNA gyrase inhibitor, topoisomerase 2,4 prokaryotic, can cause tendinopathy, toxicity. You can also treat pilo with ceftriaxone. I've seen that in NBME exam, as well as ampingent. Those are the three ways I've seen on NBME material for treating pilo. Okay, ciprofloxacin, fluoroquinolone, ceftriaxone, as well as ampingent. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B. Actually, you know what? I'll provide one more piece of tangential value for those of you studying for step one, which is you need to know that antibiotics resistance genes are carried on the plasmid. Okay, so there's one uh, uh, highly pedantic question for the NBME exam where they just say antibiotics resistance genes are lost in a bacterium, and the answer is loss of plasmid. Okay, not dramatic, but I'm just mentioning it. As I already said, Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, drug reaction, wrong answer. The way that this is going to show up on US Amelia, okay, obviously you can take a drug and you can get a maculopapular rash, uh, okay, you can get erythema multiforme, can be more severe when you get mucosal involvement, SJSTN, Stevens Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis. But drug reaction also, they like giving you on 2CK for surgery. Massive fucking paragraph, like 12 to 15 lines, all these lab values, and they're going to say eosinophils 15%. Okay, I've seen 9% in one question, I've seen 15% in another, and that's the way they ask drug reaction. Okay, so students will often memorize post surgical time frames as if they're so vital, they're not, and that's a that's the fault of different resources that will tell you at X number of days, this is when we classically see certain uh, post-op sequelae, it's fucking wrong, okay? Eosimile often doesn't care about time frames. If they want drug reaction post-surgically, they'll give you high eosinophils days, okay, but no specific number of days afterward. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Should I see membranous glomerulonephritis? Wrong answer. This is nephrotic syndrome. A lot we could talk about. If drug-induced, could be gold salts. Okay, gold salts, antiquated medication for rheumatoid arthritis. It's on one of the NBME exams. Dapsone, those are the two that cause membranous. All right, sulfonamides can cause membranous. Don't confuse with gentamicin, tobramycin, amikacin, aminoglycosides. That can cause cutibular necrosis. Or drugs that can cause tubulo interstitial nephropathy, interstitial nephritis, which would be NSAIDs, beta-lactams, cephalosporins. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, natural course of E. coli, pyelonephritis, and diabetic patient, very verbose answer choice, wrong fucking answer, okay? So, yeah, sure, we have pyelonephritis here. I didn't mention costovertebral angle tenderness, which is pathognomonic, shows up in probably four out of five pylo questions, doesn't matter, it's obvious we're talking about pylo uh, with the flank pain here. And what we have is a patient who was treated for the pylo, but then simply remained febrile. And you need to know that that's perinephric abscess. Okay, this is exceedingly important that you're aware of that. So there's, there's two scenarios, okay, where you can have uh, IV antibiotics administered followed by an abscess formation. So this is one of them. So you treat pylo, fever doesn't go away. You're going to do an ultrasound looking for perinephric abscess. If the abscess is present, you're simply going to drain the abscess. Okay, the second vignette is you're going to be treating PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay, you have IM ceftriaxone for the gonococcus. You're going to give uh, oral doxycycline or azithromycin for the chlamydia. If the patient's septic, you can give IV antibiotics. But what's going to happen is if a patient's fever persists in the setting of PID, 
That's going to be two bow ovarian abscess, and you're going to do an ultrasound followed by drainage of the abscess of the abscess if it's present. You know the deal. Until you make more content, if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.